you know, having talked to community gardeners over the years, uh, from in England and Australia and other parts, parts of the world, it's interesting how a lot of them have the, the same sort of issues. So maintenance and running costs are big issues, getting enough volunteers. And, you know, there's a lot of jobs to be done and usually not enough people to do them. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to share, what I'd like to share with you today is um, an easier and cheaper and, and, and healthy way of growing food that basically involves um, bringing back nature's free ecological services so that we get nature to do a lot of these jobs rather than us. The, the challenge is, is that we're, we're actually growing food in worn out and, and degraded ecosystems, you know, in our soils and also above the ground. And, and when I sort of say degraded, what I mean is they're not working anymore. They're not working properly anymore. And, um, and so rather than actually repairing the ecosystem, the working parts of our veggie gardens, orchards and fields, we, we've been tending to focus on the, the issues that are caused. And, and in a way, those things like, you know, compacted soil, nutrient deficiencies, you know, poor water infiltration into our soil, insect pest damage, they're really just symptoms. They're just signs that we're, that our ecosystems aren't, are no longer in good condition. The question then becomes, um, how do we repair our ecosystems? And, and you might think, oh my God, that sounds really complicated. And I need to, go, I'm going to have to work on so much more compost and so much more mulch and all these sort of things. But if we, if we reframe it and sort of say, well, who's the experts? Who, who are going to be the experts at repairing our ecosystems? And that's the microbes and invertebrates in our soil, the plants, the, the, the insects, the small mammals, the reptiles and birds in the uh, above ground ecosystems. You know, they're the experts and it's about working with them to get our soil, uh, our soil and above ground ecosystems functioning again. And that's what growing food ecologically is. So let me give you a, pra let me give you a practical example. So um, a lot of the maintenance work that we have to do in, in community gardens is about looking after the soil. And, and it's, a, it's a tough one and it's a complex one because w why, why are our vegetables not growing really well? You know, we might have the money and we might do a proper soil test. Otherwise, we tend to be guest guesstimating in a way. We might get a bit of dolomite or gypsum or lime. We might obviously add some more compost or, you know, and try and make our soils better. But if we, again, sort of look at it from a different perspective and say, okay, so my, there's something wrong with my soil, and, but now I understand it's because it's not working properly. And so who's going to help me? Who's the best um, team to get my soil working properly? And it's about the microbes and the invertebrates. It's not just microbes in our soil. We need the whole diverse community. And therefore, it just becomes a question, well, how do I give them the resources to do that? Because what we've done is we've designed our gardens and our farms to maximize the growth of plants for us to eat or our livestock. And we've neglected the food supply to our soil organisms. And so if we grow a diverse, generous, and, and as for much of the year as possible, food supply for our soil organisms, they can get, then get on with the job that they've had millions of years of on-the-job training to do. So an example of um, being able to have the diversity within a garden um, in my community plot would be to grow a variety of, of different plants um, throughout the year. Would that be one example? Yeah, yes. Growing as, as more, more plant material, more plant biomass, as you say, growing a diversity of plants and growing for as much of the year as possible. So in a lot of market gardens, you, you, you would, you'd put in some crops and to make it easier for picking, you might put in the, the same crop. But if you can diversify that, but then once that crop's finished, have other plants grow in, replace it with other things. So plant maybe a succession of plants that are going to come and start producing 
um, at different times and also add some add some plants that are just really e in a way ecological support plants so they could be plants that are, are legumes which you know the ones that have the bacteria in their roots and bring the nitrogen from the air and put it into the into the soil but they also could be deep rooted plants um, they could be plants that produce um, flowers to attract beneficial insects so yeah crops and, and ecological support plants and and for as much of the year as possible keep and that's where sort of things like cover crops come in um, or put in, in a green manure crop because after you've finished your harvested your broccoli or whatever you can then put in your green manure crop but you've still got um, that food f feeding the soil organisms and really it's it's not com complicated they need sort of three things it's it's the it's all of the as much of the plant material that's being grown above ground so you know if you've got some you're growing broccoli again cut off those dead leaves and let them drop on the on the ground mm. and but it's also the roots as well so when you harvest the plant if you can if you can leave the remains of the plant on the soil but also keep the roots in the soil and of course all the time that that plant is growing it's putting out root exudates to feed the soil organisms that's really interesting because what I've been doing in the past when I'm rotating my crops is pulling out everything, pulling out the, the root system and the old plant because I can see above ground that the plant has died. But I think all the time if you just think to yourself, how can I give my soil organisms a better diet? Because that's, and it changes our, it changes our mindset from how can I put things in my soil to how can I feed my soil organisms so they can then use their expertise and you, you're in a way you're, you're moving from being the boss to the supervisor <laughs> and you're working with them you're making sure that they've got good working conditions so they're going to start creating a, and building a nice soil structure one that the water doesn't sit in so much but remains moist so lots of aggregates lots of lumps lots of organic matter lots of air moist enough um, and um, and they're the, then, then they can get on with the job of, of recycling the nutrients and, um, and making them available for our plants to reuse. The science is now telling us that, that nutrients aren't lacking in our soil. What, what's lacking is the life in the soil to make those nutrients available. The little so, critters. Yes, so when we have the microbes in, in our soil in particular, what they do is they produce enzymes and that releases the nutrients from the, the mineral component in our soil. So Great, now I understand where you're going with that. Yeah. So we're not trying to replace chemicals that a fertilizer normally introduces because the soil has enough of those nutrients. What we're trying to do is increase the uh, the little critters is what I'm going to call them. Yep. So yep. we're lacking the little critters. They've been, they've had nothing to live off, and now if we can bring that back in um, through the ecological processes, then that's going to increase our food production and the health and um, benefit yep. our gardens. Yeah, I mean, they're the ones that run the ecological processes. They're the ones that run the nutrient recycling system. They're the ones that break down the organic matter, the mulch that we put on our soil and turn it into organic matter. They're the ones that build the aggregate structure. They're the ones that, you know, communicate with the plants. So when the plants say, I need more of this, I need more of that, and, and, and they supply that to the, to the plants. And so it, it just, yeah, it really just comes down to giving them the resources to be able to do the, to be able to do the work that they've been trained to do mm. above ground we're still doing the same thing the principle is the same let's say we want to we want to get into and um, we want to improve the we're getting a lot of pest problems and so we want to build some natural pest resistance into our landscape we want to have reduce some of the problems that we're having so all we need to do is give the the insects and the birds, the insects that are the predators and parasites of our pests, the habitat, the food and habitat, and then they'll come in. So it's no, in, it's in a way, it's the same same principles as, as giving our soil organisms the food, except we've also got to give them the, the habitat. So, 
and that can be as simple as growing a diversity of plants with different leaf shapes and different flowers because we're creating all of this diversity in our habitat just by by doing that mm -hmm. yeah. um, yes so I think that was a penny drop for me people focus on this soil microbiome but you don't have a balanced soil ecosystem unless you've also got the invertebrates otherwise you would have huge numbers of bacteria because you have no predators for them so it's a balanced soil. but but, but the nice thing is if you just sort of say diversity more generous as much of the year as possible they'll work it out mm -hmm. they'll sort themselves out they'll be and they'll be they won't just be one nematode that you think is sort of causing nematode root rot there'll be a whole diversity of nematodes in there you know there's nematodes that that form loops sorry there's fungus that form loops around uh, loops around nematodes and actually suffocate or squeeze the nematodes to death all of those sort of things will be happening naturally so it's it's in a way yeah we're standing back we're no longer being the boss we're no longer saying I think I know what's best for my soil we're saying the soil organisms know what's best for my soil how can I give them the resources so that they can get on with the job that they've had all those millions of years of training to do yeah that's ecologic that's ecological <laughs> yeah and so all you need to do is ask yourself is what I'm doing ecological mm -hmm.